Dear God, when we hear that song, Jesus is near and all things are possible, it thrills our hearts to know that that's more than a song. It's the truth. You are here. Lord, I believe you were just behind the tabernacle just now also. That little mother holding that little baby soaking wet in the rain. My Jesus, help me. And that young man calling for his loved one way yonder in the hospital dying. Hear our prayers, Lord. There's people sat in this church all day long since six o'clock this morning. They're waiting to see you, Lord. Amen. They've heard us talk today that you raised from the dead. And you're the same Jesus still living tonight after 1900 years. You're still Jesus and we pray, God, that you'll heal every sick person that's in divine presence. Yes. May there not be a feeble person in our midst when this service is over. Grant it, Jesus. Grant it. Just show us, Lord, that you're here. Yes. Grant it, Lord. We're thinking of two men on that Easter morning who was discouraged. No doubt, but many here are discouraged tonight. Oh, Jesus. Sick and can't get well. Doctors has given them up. And as they went on their road, there was a stranger who walked out and talked with them. Talked about the scriptures the rest of the day. And at night time, when he got them in the room and shut the door, he'd done Amen. something. He did it just the way he did it before the crucifixion. And they knew that that was the risen Lord. He vanished out of their sight. They run quickly back to tell others he's risen from the dead. God, we pray that he'll come in our midst tonight and do the things that he did before his crucifixion. 1,900 years is nothing to him. He's eternal. And may many here tonight rush home quickly telling their wife, their husband, their loved ones, their neighbors, he lives. He appeared to me tonight. He healed my sickness. I'm going to be well. Amen. Grant this, my God. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seen. I'm sorry that I got hoarse. But I've just been so busy. Speaking, baptizing, had the flu to start with. Since I come back from down in Florida and over the islands. I have to leave in the morning now for California. For nearly a solid month of meetings. So I asked Brother Neville if he'd speak for me tonight. I'm sure you've heard a wonderful message. We enjoyed this morning's service from Brother Neville. And we are trusting that God will continue to be with him in this church as he pastors here. Now, I just met Billy out there. And he kind of touched me on the side. He said, Daddy, the people are standing here and someone's been in here all day long. I said, well, I'm glad that our services are drawing close to the end. So you won't have to stand. It's raining. And when I come in the building, a little couple were getting out of the car out there with a little sick baby and it's soaking wet. She couldn't even get in the doors. But as certain as I'm standing here, God healed that baby standing beside the Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. How he answers prayer. And now, after we have preached today and this morning, I preached on five subjects. Living, dying, buried, rising, coming. Living, he loved me. Dying, he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. Someday he's coming, O glorious day. Amen. We sat watching tonight, waiting for his appearing. Why are we jammed in here? Why does people come to hear the gospel? Yet in its simplicity, it's the greatest drawing card the world's ever had. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. 
Now the thing is, is this religion we talk about, is it real? Is it the truth? If it is the truth, then we can believe every word the Bible says. If it isn't the truth, we should have nothing to do with it. We should just go on in our sins, eat, drink, for tomorrow we die. But I'm so thankful to know that this that we're talking about is the truth. And it's the only religion in the world, yet fourth in number. Yet it's the only religion in the world that the founder could die and rise again and the living tonight. I seen in the paper here in the city paper the other day where they've got a man, a Buddha, has been raised up. Many of you saw that in the paper. they got a man that's a little Buddha that performs things just like Buddha did. Of course, he did no miracles, but his teaching and everything was just like Buddha. If Buddha's got a man on the field, a false one, God's got the Holy Ghost on the field. The real Spirit of God. Now, we talked about these wonderful things, but will it work? Will the, whole, will the Holy Spirit forgive a man his sins? Will he heal his sickness? Certainly he will. He's God forevermore. Now, if we can, if Jesus will come to our midst and will prove himself that he is alive, here tonight among us, it ought to make every one of us believe every promise he's got in the Bible. Is there anybody here that's never been in one of my meetings before? Let's see your hand. It's never been in the meeting before. Just look, practically half the crowd. I'm not a healer. I don't believe, don't believe there is a man that's a healer. Jesus Christ is the healer. And he said when he was here on earth that God was the healer. Now, when he was here on earth, he did not claim to be a healer, but he showed to the people his Messiah sign. And that Messiah sign was to know the secret of their heart. How many knows that's true? Amen. When he told Peter, when he come before him, what his name was, what his father's name was. Peter believed in such a way, with such a faith that Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom later and put him over the church. When Philip found Nathaniel on the tree and told him, come see who I found, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And that staunch religionist said, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? He gave him the best answer that any man could give. He said, come and see. Don't just criticize it. Come look for yourself. And as soon as Philip come up with Nathaniel, Jesus said to him, behold an Israelite in whom there is no God. He said, when did you know me? Rabbi, he said, before Philip called you, I saw you under the tree. He said, you're the son of God, the king of Israel. He told the woman at the well what was in her heart. These things prove that he was the Messiah. And if that Messiah is risen from the dead today and has made the atonement and healed our sickness and forgive our sins, then the only thing he could do was show that same sign back again that he's still alive to make any promise that he made good. Amen. Is that true? Amen. Let us believe that now while we pray. Lord, the people are waiting. One word from you will be more than Brother Neville or I could say yes. many lifetimes. Amen. Just one word. Amen. Now there's half of this audience that's never seen the meetings before. Lord God, creator of heavens and earth, send the power of Jesus Christ into this room. The resurrected one, the Holy Spirit that came on Pentecost. And may he so anoint the people. May I be able, even to this horses, to yield myself so completely to his spirit that he could speak to this broken voice that I offer to him. Look through these eyes that I offer to him. To show visions and things that would make the people see that he's raised from the dead. And when this people sees that, may the entire audience embrace every promise that he made. If they have sin, may they embrace him for forgiveness. If they have sickness, may they know that by his stripes we are healed. Grant it, Lord. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now is a great showdown. Here before two or three hundred people, it's simple. When you stand before 
500,000, a half a million, same things takes place. He's God. Now, how many in your sick and wants to be prayed for? Raise your hands. See? About half of you or more. I can't bring them all up here. I think I had to ask Billy again. Ask him if he'd give out prayer cards. Yeah, yeah. Did, did he do it? All right. All right. Last Sunday, the last time I was here, they didn't give out any prayer cards, and I just asked how many people here has never been in the meeting before. Many raised up their hands that they've never been in the meeting. While they stood with their hands up, the Holy Spirit went out telling them who they were and what their diseases was and what had taken place and Amen. healed the people so completely till tumors and things disappeared. The operations Amen. cannot be performed. Praise How many were sure to see that? Amen. Just a few weeks ago. If he's given out prayer cards, then we'll call. That gives home people and not home people. People who has been in the meeting, people who has not, to come in the prayer line. We can't take them all up here at once. We'll bring them just quietly as we can. And I want you to be honest with God. Be honest with yourself. And if Jesus Christ will come into our midst and perform and do just as he did when he was here on earth walking in Galilee, you are to accept him for anything that you have need of. You don't have to be up here on the platform. He regards faith. There will be some people here that's sick out there in the audience that hasn't even got a prayer card. They'll be healed anyhow. How many sick and doesn't have a prayer card? Raise up your hand. Not too many prayer cards give out then. See? All right, you just believe. Just look this way. Let me show you what Jesus did when he was here on earth. There's a woman one time came to him, and she could not get into the press. She had no prayer card, but she touched the border of his garment, for she said in her heart, I know that man tells the truth. If I can touch his garment, I'll be made well. And she touched his garment, went out in the audience probably many times bigger than this. Jesus turned and said, Who touched me? Peter even rebuked him and said, Why would you ask such a thing? When I was trying to touch you, he said, but I perceive that I've gotten weak. Visions cause weakness. You can't do go too far in them. And he said, looked around over the audience till he found the woman and told her that she'd had a blood issue and her faith had made her well. How many knows that? Amen. The Bible said that Jesus Christ today is a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Is that right? Well, if he was a high priest and could be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, wouldn't he act just like he did then, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? Then you that don't have a prayer card, you look this way and say in your heart, Lord, I believe with all my heart, and I believe that you're going to heal me, and let me touch your garment, and you speak through Brother Branham, and tell him, just like you did the woman, and I'll believe you. Will you be that honest and believe God with all your heart? Billy Paul said instead of a few minutes ago standing here, you took a love offering for me. I didn't want to list that. That was, but thank you just the same. I need it now on my California trip. I'll put it to the gospel. Them little offerings that you give me, you know what happens to them? I went to Puerto Rico and Jamaica a few weeks ago where they registered 40,000 converts in nine nights. Amen. What did it? Your tithings. Amen. When I left the mayor of the the judge of the island stood up. He said, we have evangelists come in here and take up great offerings and cost great money. But said, when Brother Branham come, he didn't even ask for a penny of money, never asked to pay his hotel bill, and he paid his own fare back and forth. What did it? Your money. I want to be sure that I spend it right so that the judgment bar, when I stand before you and God, have to give an account for it, it's done right. I took it myself as long as I'm able to go to do the best I can for His glory. Now, we can't bring all the prayer cards up at once, so I'll just bring them up just a few at a time. Who has prayer card number one? Would you raise up your hand? If you can, get up. Way back in the back. It's a colored lady. Come right down this way, lady. Make your way down and come here to the side of the platform. Now, who has prayer card number two? If you can get up, raise your hand. Prayer card number two. A white lady here. All right, lady, you come right up and follow this colored lady. 
up here. Right up here. Now I'll get them around that way. Doc Stevens just gets filled up here. Prayer card number three. Would you hold up your hand if you can? The gentleman right over here, sir. Number four. Would you hold up your hand? All right, lady. Right over here. Number five. Would you hold up your hand? This young fellow right here. So far, every one of them's strangers to me. Number six. Would you hold up your hand? Number six. Did I call number five? Number five and number six. Also a stranger to me. Number seven. Would you raise your hand? Raise your hand. Who has number seven? There he is. All right. I believe I know that fellow. Yeah. I, I believe I know him. Number eight. Would you raise your hand if you can? A lady over here. All right. Number nine. All right, lady. Number ten. All right. Number ten. The lady. There's some mistake somewhere. <laughs> What number is this man here? Would somebody look? Some of you ushers come here and see. He's 84. 84. It's um, uh, 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 number 10 I was calling that. <laughs> number 10. We, we'll get to you anyhow. That's all right. Look, I know what your number is now. It's 84, wasn't you say? 84 or something like that. All right. You just wait there. You just believe. I tell you, if you don't use that card, prayer card, you look this way and believe God and see if God will answer prayer for you. Amen. All right. Number, was that 10? 11. All right, 12. Now, if you can't get up, just number 12. 13. Number 13, way back. 14. Number 14. Way in the back. Number 15. They'll give out any word. The boys will give them out to say, who wants a prayer card? Hold up your hands. They take them and mix them all up. Nobody knows which is getting which and this getting that way. Number 14, number 15. Who has prayer card 15? Number 15. Number 16. Way back in the back. Number 17. Now, if number 16 is in the building or standing out in the aisle, just make yourself a way around. Number, I'm sorry, I've never seen your hand, sister. You're 16 or 17. 18. 19, number 19, 20, number 20, the man over here, all right, all right, now I believe we're getting right out in the aisle here now, so we'll, what say, that's enough for the time, all right, we'll look this way and believe, all right, <clears throat> let's see if the pianist. Softly, quietly, only believe. Just real soft. <coughs> but most of the people in the aisle here is strangers to me. I don't know you. Now there's some in here that still has prayer cards. Some perhaps does not have prayer cards. Maybe we can call some more to prayer line just in a few minutes as soon as we get this aisle straightened up. I believe that gentleman here, Doc, was coming in from the back there. He is called 16 or 16. All right, come right along there and get your position, sir. Now, if you're not called, that don't have one thing to do with it. Just look and believe. Number 15 is missing. Maybe the person can't get up. If you can't get up, somebody look at the other person's prayer card. Maybe deaf and can't hear if they're here, 15, you're welcome to take their place in the line. If they stepped out and we'll be back in a few minutes, put them in the line just as their number's call. And when we get down along the line here, we'll call some more in. If the Holy Spirit doesn't seem to be anointing the building, the people, so that they can be healed. Now, now's a crucial moment. Now's the time where I've either told the truth or told a lie. Now is the time where Jesus Christ is proved risen from the dead or he isn't risen from the dead. Now is the time he's the same yesterday, today, and forever or he isn't the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now he's got to prove to be the healer or he isn't the healer. And if anybody would want to take my place to pray for the sick, you're welcome to come and take my place. 
How many of you in the prayer line here, as you look here, it's in the prayer line now, doesn't know me, and you know I don't know you or nothing about you? Raise up your hand. Out in the audience that knows that I know nothing about you, raise up your hand, yet you're sick. Out in the audience. There you are. Now what will God do? There's the Scripture. The Spirit of God is here. Now, will it work? If I can yield myself to the Holy Spirit, it'll work. And it won't work for me unless it, you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. For many mighty works Jesus cannot do in his own country because of their unbelief. Now you believe with all your heart. Be real reverent as you can. Stand quietly. Watch. If the Holy Spirit does something, then rejoice. Then believe. Now, Lord, all that we have, all that we are, they stood till their legs are cramping. They sat till they're nearly ready to faint. Now, Lord, let it be known that thou art God. And I'll call this audience together at your command. Now, I'm standing here not to be seen or not to try to be acting big or doing something different, but it's because it's a commission charged me by an angel and confirmed by your word. Let it be known tonight that you're Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that raised from the dead. And you live in your church, in your people, to perform and to carry out the same ministry you had when you were here in the body of flesh. Grant it, Lord. We'll praise you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Now, where's Billy Paul? Is he in it, Billy? Has he left or... Somebody ought to come here to take up these prayer cards. They come, brother, ones. <clears throat> the woman has a prayer card in her hand. You just get it. Be real reverent now. Now, this lady here, as far as I know, is a total stranger to me. And here's a perfect setting of a scripture. Two people and two different nationalities. Jesus come to a well one time in St. John 4 and met a woman of Samaria. And he talked to her a little while until he found out what her trouble was. And he told her her trouble. And when he did, she recognized it to be the Messiah. How many knows that? Remember the conversation? He said, woman, bring me a drink. What was he doing? Contacted her spirit. And she said, the well's deep and you have nothing to draw with. It's not customary for you to, a Jew to ask Samaritan such. He said, but if you know who you're talking to, you'd ask me for water. And so the conversation went on till he found out what her trouble was. How many knows what her trouble was? She's living in adultery. So he said, go get your husband and come here. She said, I don't have any husband. I said, that's right, you've had five. And the one you're living with now is not your husband. Now listen what she said. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. The Messiah, the sign of the Messiah. He'll do this when he comes because he was a God prophet. The prophet Moses spoke of. Said, We know Messiah will do this when he comes, but who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. And she ran into the city and told the man, Come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't this a Messiah? Now here stands an Ethiopian woman to an Anglo-Saxon man. First time in life meeting. What we call colored woman, white man. When that question was raised there in, the, in segregation before Jesus, he let him know real quick. There's no difference in people's colors. We all come from one tree, Adam and Eve. Exactly. The countries we live in that changed our color had nothing to do with it. God died for all creatures. The white man, the black man, the yellow man, the brown man, the red man, all. They're all creatures of God. But the lady stands here for something. Maybe she's a believer. Maybe she isn't. Maybe she's a sinner. She might be a saint. She may be sick. She may not. She may want financial trouble. She may be standing for somebody else. I don't know. I've never seen her. And I have no more idea what she's here for than nothing. 
And the lady knows that. Is that right, lady? Yes, sir. If that's right, raise up your hand so the people can see. Just raise up your hand so the people just raise up your hand. This is our first meeting. Now, if the Lord Jesus will, if she's sick, I couldn't heal her. No more than I could heal you. But if, if Jesus is here, he couldn't heal her because he's already done it when he died at Calvary. But he can do something to prove that he's still the same Jesus and she'd believe it should be healed. And at the same time she'd be healed, you'd be healed too if you believe it. Is that right? Now, may the Lord grant it. I'm waiting for the anointing of the Holy Spirit, of course. And now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take every spirit in here under my control for the glory of God. Now, lady, I just want you to look at me just a moment. I want you to believe with all your heart. And I have no more idea what you're here for, who you are, than nothing. But God knows all about you. But if God will tell me what you're here for, then you'll believe that Jesus Christ, God's Son, is sure to do and act the way He did when He was here on earth. Will the audience believe with one accord? Now, here we are. The scene is set. We've both got our hands up. We're strangers to one another. The Holy Spirit wrote the Bible, said these things that happened in this day, that Jesus had raised from the dead, and these things would go on. His ministry would continue, and in this last days, it would be just exactly the way He promised it to be. Now, is it right? The lady... As she's nervous, of course, she's rubbing her hands because she's feeling strange at this time. It's not because she's standing at me. I'm her brother. Wouldn't make her feel that way, but she's, a, she's conscious that something's going on. And you see that picture there with that light over it, sister? That's what makes you feel that way. That's that angel of the Lord. It's right over you now. And you're here for me to pray for you for a back trouble that you're suffering with. That's right. Raise up your hand. Now, do you believe? Make known the secret of the heart. Just like he said, you have five husbands. You say, now the newcomers, you might say, Brother Branham, guess that. Let's see if it guessed. I believe it said you had back trouble. Is that right? Yes. Sir. That was the truth. Yes, sir. And you, you've had an operation too, and you've just come from the hospital. And that you might know that I be God's servant. Your husband's sitting back there. Yes, sir. That's right. And he's got trouble too. If I can tell you what your husband's trouble is, will you believe? Yes, sir. He's got trouble with his side and with his back. Is that right? Raise up your hand. I'll tell you something else. I see a young man. Your son's sitting right back there, too. Right. And your son has some sort of spells. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Mrs. Stovall is your name. That's your name, Mrs. Stovall. Yes. Go home. Jesus Christ has answered your prayers. You can have what you ask for. Just believe, all you people, it's colored people, believe with all your heart now. Do you realize that Jesus Christ, God's Son's raised from the dead? That's His Spirit that makes you feel that way. Now, here's a white woman. I don't know her. Don't have no idea who she is, what she is, or, or what you're here for. If that's right, raise up your hand. Now, do you believe if God will can reveal her heart just like he did the woman at the well, like he did the colored woman? How many of you white people would believe if he did? Hear me and this woman both with her hands up. This is our first meeting. I'll say one thing. The lady's not from around here. You've come from the east, coming west when you come here. Right. You come to Ohio. And the city was Dayton. Right. And what you're here for is because you have weakness. <coughs> and you have a nervous condition. Because you can't sleep. You take some kind of a drug for that. 
They call you Dixie. That's right. Mason. That's right. Go back. You're going to sleep now. Spend the night on Jesus Christ makes you well. Go in the name of the Lord. If thou canst believe. Now you out there in the audience, while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is here, you believe. You without the prayer cards. What about the old man who stood here a while ago that couldn't be, couldn't get the line, he had the wrong number. Where was he at? You? Stand up on your feet. You believe Jesus Christ be the Son of God? You believe me to be his prophet? All right, you got trouble with your lungs. That's right. It's left you now. Go home and be well. Have faith and believe. God is God. How do you do, sir? Do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ? Now, there was a man came to Jesus one time. And he went and got saved and went and told another friend and brought him. And this friend told him that he was a believer and he was astonished at his hearing. And he said, when did you ever know me? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. That was 30 miles around the mountain. On foot, it'd take him a day to come back to the prayer line. And when he come in the prayer line, do you believe that Jesus can tell me what your trouble is? Would you believe with all your heart? Would the audience believe with all their heart? <coughs> it's not himself he's here for. For somebody else. And that's a woman. And she's shattered with death. That's your sister. It's not exactly your, it's your half-sister. And she's not here. She's in a hospital in Tennessee. So are you from there. And your, the woman's had an operation, but it didn't do any good. And you're standing in her stead. God grant your request. Go and make God heal that woman and make her well. Upon the basis of the faith of this man, Lord God, we condemn that devil that's taken the life of that woman. And may this person who's a relative to him live because he has come and stood in her stead. Jesus, you stood at Calvary in our stead. And you healed us and we believe you. May it be so. Amen. Go believing now, brother. Take no thought for nothing else. How do you do? We are strangers to one another. This is our first time meeting. I just be just as reverent and listen close and pray. If we don't know one another and we are strangers to each other, maybe our first time we've ever met. Is that right? If this is the first time we've ever met, raise up your hand. If God will reveal to me what your trouble is, then you'll believe me to be his servant? I'll tell you now, we've never met before, but you're a Kentuckian. That's right. You come from a place called Somerset, Kentucky. That's exactly right. I'm from Burksville, Kentucky. And you're suffering with a trouble that's it's in the, uh, uh, the stomach bowels, the lower part. Yes. It's tumors. That's right. All right, Jewel. You go. <laughs> I'll grant your healing to you. <laughs> Do you believe on the Son of God, the resurrected <laughs> Jesus, if thou canst be? You might wonder why the lady is rejoicing. You would too if you had been in a dying condition. I don't know you. But I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I believe you were baptized this morning. Because I see you've done something good. But to know you, I don't know you. You just walked into the pool and that was... She was bad but do you believe Jesus can reveal to me your troubles? Does the audience believe that with all their heart?
I see a woman up here between me and you. You're standing here for a woman. And the woman's much older than you. Watch your mother. She's not here. She's from Georgia. And she's real nervous. What it is is a change of life, menopause. And you're standing for your mother. That is true. Well, she's going to get over it and be well. Hallelujah. You go believing now. It'll all be over. Tell her to have a good courage. God bless you, young man. Have faith. Believe with all your heart. If thou canst believe, pray. I suppose that you and I are strangers. God knows you and he knows me. But could God reveal to me your trouble? And if he would, would you believe him? How many people in here would believe and say, God, I'll believe if you'll tell that man. Just a moment. Lady sitting right behind these girls here looking at me. She's suffering with varicose veins. And she's sitting there praying for somebody else. And her spirit has touched the high priest. And she's in contact with God. You're praying for a friend of yours that has mental trouble. And they're living in a, a city, a little city. It's Cardin, Indiana. That's right. If you can believe, you can have what you ask for. Amen. You've had a heart attack. Close to the road. Let me tell you one of your troubles, old. <clears throat> Smoking cigarettes. Wait a minute. That spirit jumped then. You don't want to do that. That's what's causing your trouble. Here, it's this young man sitting right over here. He wants to get rid of cigarettes too. <clears throat> if you'll believe with all of his heart, cigarette habit will leave. <clears throat> if thou canst believe, you believe it? If you'll believe it, act upon it, you can have your deliverance. So can you. You're not from here. You're from away from here, too. You go back to Owensboro now, praising the Lord. <clears throat> Have faith in God. I know you, but I don't know what's wrong with you. <clears throat> if the Lord will reveal to me what your trouble is, will you believe him? Then your stomach trouble will get all right. Go home and enjoy it. Believe with all your heart. I don't believe I know you. Are we strangers to one another? Do you believe that what I, if I tell you the truth, you know it was the truth or not? All right, your heart trouble will leave you. Go home and be well. I don't know you, but God knows you. You believe if I tell you what your trouble was and where it was at, you get well and you're back. Go home now. It's going to leave you and you're going to be well. <clears throat> You think God could heal that tumor and make it well without operation? You do? Raise up your hand if you believe it. Go home and receive it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, believe. Strange when I said that you had the same thing? Tumor? You felt a funny feeling when I said that because both spirits jumped at the same time. Go. Jesus Christ make you well. Believe. If you're a young man, I have arthritis. But you believe Jesus will make you well? If you do, walk on out. Believing we made whole. How many believes with all your heart? What if I didn't say a word to you but told you God heals you when you come around the corner and you had that funny feeling? Would you believe me? Going home, you're well. Jesus Christ makes you well. You're a young woman but suffering with nervousness. Do you believe that God will kill that nervousness and take it from you? You've been trying to find a place to start from. This is it right here. Go now rejoicing, happy. It's over for you. Believe with all your heart. You have a nervous condition which has caused a stomach trouble. You were healed when you raised up back there, sir. That's the reason I was waiting for you to come to you. Hey, Go on eat your supper. Be well. Yeah. A lady's trouble. Nervous. Upset. That's right. 
It's going to leave you now. Go home and be well. In the name Amen. of the Lord Jesus, just have faith. You have a female disorder. That's right. Causes a drainage. It's a stopped up ovary. Believe. Jesus Christ will make you well. Go home and believe with all your heart. Now you have a serious condition. It's in your heart. Blockage. You believe in Jesus Christ make you well? If you believe it, go in the name of the Lord and be well. Have faith in God. All right, brother. You believe that Jesus Christ makes you well, too? Just crawl down the line, praising the Lord. How many out there now that believes on the Lord Jesus? He knows everything. Miss Nash, I know you, but I can't help that light holding over you. I know you. But you're praying for somebody else. It's a little kid, a little child. Doesn't live here, it lives down in Tennessee. Also, you're praying for your doctor friend that's got a heart trouble. And his wife has just had a slight stroke. That's right. Believe and you can be well. A little lady sitting on the end of the seat there's her finger over her mouth. What do you think, little lady? You've had a nervous breakdown. You're scared of having another. That's right. If that's right, raise up your hand as you wipe your tears from your eyes. Don't fear, you won't have it. The lady sitting next to you there. You got asthma. Barnacle troubles. Stop smoking, it'll leave you. Have faith in God. Believe with all your heart. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Here's the lady sitting right behind this lady here. I'm sure you're, the lady, just a moment, her name is Mrs. Evans, she's from Kentucky, Louisville, that's right, I don't know you, you know that's true, you got heart trouble, got trouble with your ears, that's right, if that's right, raise up your hand, go back to Louisville, Jesus Christ makes you well, yeah. I challenge your faith in the name of Jesus Christ to believe it, anybody in here, believe with all your heart. Way back in the back, standing way back, you believe. You don't have to be no certain place. Right. Over on this side, believe. How many back there needs healing? Raise your hands and say, I believe, Lord. Amen. Have faith. <coughs> Setting right back in this direction here. I see a man is praying sincerely. And a vision stands there. He's a preacher. He's standing by a pulpit. And he's preaching for an increase, praying for an increase in his ministry. I've never seen him before in my life. But that's what you're praying for, brother. You shall have it now. Believe on the Lord Jesus. There's a man sitting back behind him there. He's got something wrong with his arm, knots on his arm. He's also, if you believe it, sir, you can have your healing. Amen. Just out here at the end of this row here, second one in, a little lady with her head down, right back towards the back, sitting there praying, got gallbladder trouble. That's it, lady. You put up your hand. I know you're the one that's praying. You received your healing just then. How about it? Do you believe Jesus raised from the dead? Is he here now? Do you believe him? Then if you believe me, if I've told you the Bible truth and God's turned around and vindicated I've told you the truth, that leaves it perfectly that the Lord Jesus is here. Is that right? Then you do this. Do this. Don't doubt. You put your hands over on somebody sitting next to you. I'll pray for Matt. You're in the whole group of you be healed right now if you'll believe it. Will you believe it? Lay your hands over on one another then. All that believes you're going to be healed now say amen. 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 Now you, I'm going to say this prayer. You pray it. You pray it after me. O oh Lord, creator of heavens and earth, author of everlasting life, giver of every good gift, I'm in need, Lord, of your healing power. And I pray that you'll give me faith to accept it 
as your promise. I believe that you're the same Jesus that walked the shores of Galilee, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died, rose, ascended on high, give gifts back to man, to the Holy Ghost. I believe the Holy Ghost is here, carrying on the same work that you did when you were here. I embrace that promise. I accept my healing. I promise to live for you and obey your commandments, walk in the light. And now I believe, because I've made this confession, that I am healed by your stripes. Step real quiet. Now just think that's your confession. God's coming into you right now. Breathe in the Holy Spirit by faith. I believe that my condition is being healed. I believe that all my sickness is taken away. You're right now in the presence of God. Can't you feel that spirit? Open your heart, your, your faith. The Holy Spirit's healing the people right now. A little girl just sitting here, another one's human right. The whole platform seems to be illuminated with the power of the risen Christ. He's over the audience. He's in the people. Now, that was your prayer. Now, I'm going to pray and ask the devil of doubt to get away from you. Oh, Lord, God, creator of heavens and earth, hear my prayer, Lord. Quickly, while the Holy Ghost is here, before the people perish, I condemn the devil. Jesus Christ took the victory away from you. He won it at Calvary. He triumphed over death. The devil held in the grave and rose again on the third day and to lie forevermore. Come out of here, Satan. You are a defeated being. Leave this people and let them be healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All that accept your healing, stand to your feet right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Raise your hands to him and praise him. Only people that I see it's not up is a man sitting here in a wheelchair. Can't heal him. I know what his case is. He's a polio case. Looks like a wheelchair back here. Let's see. Hallelujah. That's the case. A lady with one limb. Is that right? Do you believe me to be God's prophet? I'm a stranger to you. I cannot heal you. But do you believe God can tell me what your trouble is? If it would do, would it help you? You're diabetic. That's true. Now believe it and go home and be well. You're in a wheelchair. That's all you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be healed. Raise your hands now and say, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. I praise you, Lord, for healing me. God is good. God is great. God is precious. God is real. God is here. The Holy Ghost is here. The power of God is here. And I now believe with all that's in me that Jesus Christ, God's Son, makes me well. Hallelujah. Amen. If there be any here who is condemned of sin and knows that your sins are out of the blood and right now in the presence of God who knows your thoughts and the Holy Spirit's telling me this, would you like to accept him as your personal Savior? Want to be remembered in prayer? Raise your hands. All that's in here, God bless you and you and you and you and you. That's right. Back there, you and over here. Sure. Back here. God bless you, son. God bless you over there. God bless you. Amen. That's right. See, the Holy Spirit's never wrong. When the Holy Spirit says, I was fixing to turn to service for Brother Neville, for the Amen. healing's over. But something said, they need healing of the soul. Amen. Praise God. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, bow your head just a moment. That's all for prayer. Brother Neville, so horse, get off of this prayer, will you? <laughs> Heavenly Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has so gloriously walked here among us tonight, 
as these that bow their head in faith tonight believing that you are able to deliver them both soul and body save the ones that believe now in repentant faith dear god may this night be a different night to them give them now the desire oh god and they give them now oh lord jesus that much desired knowledge of sins forgiven save every one oh god that bows their head out there that ask an interest in prayer and may they from this time on may they purpose in their heart to live for him who died for them in jesus name and for jesus sake we pray amen and amen praise the lord